Okay, here I have an item 50 auto provisioning example that I'm going to show to you where I provision Active Directory. I'm going to log into the item manager interface as a administrator of the system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one person record with a role for a role based provisioning example that is going to create an Active Directory account in a specific organizational unit in Active Directory. The specific OU where I create my user will be, it will be in the OU called IBM underscore CM. And you can see the user list here for IBM underscore CM when refreshed only has these specific users. So let's go ahead and start the provisioning request. I go into the item interface and what I'll do is I'll select manage users and I'll select create. The creation of the account is going to create me an identity inside the item manager interface where the LDAP repository that item uses will have a record that enables me the ability to provision and assign accounts to remote targets starting from that entity. So I click on the create button here for the tasks and let's just create a user called Betty Rush. Now the one thing Betty Rush is going to have is she's going to have a role since we're showing an example of role based provisioning. Now the provisioning policy and the service are two important pieces for this solution. I haven't showed you those here in the screen because that's the setup and configuration that apply to you when you're creating this. So the information here is relative to the creation. Go ahead and hit create here. And like I said, the account will just put some simple attributes here and that'll auto provision my account into Active Directory. Last name is Rush. First full name is Betty Rush. B R U S H is the unique ID, and the first name is Betty. The role that the user is going to have, this is defined in the setup is AD underscore role and that widget will then allow that user to have that information. We'll select continue and we're going to have the system generate a password for the account that will be consistent against all of the targets we provisioned from this point forward. We're going to hit submit and the password as an option is granted to me in the screen so that I can use it and forward it along. If I supplied an email address for a manager or a specific user, then that would be the password that would go forward. So let's go ahead and copy this password here. We'll copy that in our browser and we'll go ahead and say let's view the request. ITIM has an audit trail for all provisioning requests that's shown to you as an admin so you can see your nested provisioning ordered request and or audit requests that have been submitted by other users, assuming you have the permissions to do so. You as an end user also have a way to view your request through your history and your audit trail, so it's completely reportable. When we go into the target, we said have a, an account for Betty Rush created in a specific organizational unit and have the item server go ahead and do that. So when we go back and look at the Active Directory environment here, our user Betty Rush should have been created in the IBM underscore CM container. Let's go out there and refresh that container here in Active Directory and see if the user exists. The user account Betty Rush is now shown here under BART and you can see the account was created. Now let's go into item and validate how it did that. When we look at the audit trail for the provisioning request that we sent, we sent in a specific ordered provisioning request based on a rule that was tied to an organizational role. The role said if you belong to this role, you should get an Active Directory account. So that's what we're going to show you here. The audit trail for the view request by users is showing me a view here of the requests that were done. Here on the 19th at 4.38 p.m., I created an account for Betty Rush. When I click at the new user for the request type, which is what I submitted, all we did was create a user, it shows me some ordered provisioning here in the process detail. When I look at the process detail information, it will show me that we created a person and then we enforced policy for that person, which is what the server has been set to do. The enforcement of the policy for that service created two accounts. One item account, which is something that I defined for everyone, and the other was the actual Active Directory account. And as we saw, we already took a sneak peek at the account, which lives out there in Active Directory world. Now, the user has an account that he can log into from Tim. So let's go back and now let's log into the self-help console. So if we were the user and we had our email set up and we were first time at the company, we would then get 
our account handed to us by an administrator or manager or whatnot. And that person would say, here's your account login. So let's log in with our account and let's log in with the password. Now I took the password from the account that I had created and we'll go ahead and log in. This allows me to log into the item interface as the user and now I can com I can manage some of my own tasks assuming that it's allowed. Much like any new account when you enter a company the first thing you want to do is change your password so no one else knows it. Maybe a default rule. The user can simply click change password in the item interface validate his current password which he's been given either on a hard piece of paper or through some electronic format and he can create a new password for himself. AAA 444 IBM P2. AAA 444 IBM P2. This will then allow him to submit it and the confirmation that the user has now submitted his password change work and it tells him where he did it on. He did it for Active Directory, he did it for ITIM. The next time he logs in, he and himself only went all the password and he'd be a valid user inside of ITIM. That's the administrative password change that the user did for himself, showed you the audit history. We can go back in as the administrator and we can check what kind of provisioning happened in the system for our user community based on viewing an audit trail. So let me just show you that quickly and that'll end the provisioning example of how we did this on the target. The view pending request allows you to sort them based on action types and also on date range and specific users. So when we look at the view request, we'll simply just look at all the vending requests here. And it'll show here. Here's my view pending request, view all requests. The process view will show me what they were. And we'll see here our new account creation followed by a multiple account password change. And the interesting information here is you can see who initiated the request and how the request was done. All of this is fully auditable and reportable. Reports are canned in the product. They're not customized. You have the ability to customize them as well, but the default reports are all there for you. The request view will show here the information for the account. And what we're looking for is this account, Betty Rush. OK, let's go over to Tim. Here's the request detail. Here we have the system system administrator, which was the IT manager, created the user Betty Rush. And then we see here there was a multiple password change account done by the user, the requester, therefore being Betty Rush. So here the system generated, the user is now in control and managing it through the application. And that's the demo I have for you. I hope it helps.